So you think you're ready to hit that book exam button, but you want to make sure that you've got all your bases covered first. Well today, we'll go over what I think it takes to be ready for your OSCP exam. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you don't miss any future video. Taking the OSCP exam for the first time is a nerve wracking exercise. You've worked on it for so long and you might feel confident, but you're also just a bit unsure if you've got everything covered. Well, I'm gonna go over some things which I think are most important to being in the best position to pass. Keep in mind, you'll probably never actually feel ready but you can always prepare things to give yourself the best chance. So let's get on with my list. Have you done enough machines? I know some people who go straight into the exam with only doing a handful of machines. While this has been successful for a few people, the vast majority, it isn't the case. I even disagree with Offensive Security's materials saying that completing 100% of the PWK lab will give you the best chance of passing. I strongly encourage additional material like Virtual Hack Labs, Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, but best of all, the Offensive Security Proving Ground practice. Are you quick enough? PWK is really great at teaching you by doing that rote learning and building almost muscle memory for all the basic enumeration tasks that you need to do. But what about your whole workflow? Should you, you should be able to solve most of the machines probably in about two to three and a half hours. How good is your buffer overflow? Similarly, time is of the essence, and the buffer overflow is a great, easy 25 points if you have the process down pat. You'd like to be able to do this in under 40 minutes during the exam. How are your web exploits? Web applications are often one of the most common form of intrusion, both in the real world and all the practice labs that we do. Make sure you're proficient in enumerating databases for SQL injections and that you are crafty with your local and remote file inclusions and are pretty good with unrestricted file uploads as well. How is your privilege escalation? Privilege escalation is tricky and it can be one of those things that can be super easy to find or really deeply buried, especially in a Linux system. Be sure that you know all the common outputs from your enumeration scripts, as well as know where to look for things. Also, consider doing Tiberius's Privilege Escalation course on Udemy. I found this really great value and I've got it linked in the description. Do you know your common commands? By this, I mean things for spawning shells and transferring files, and you also need to have multiple backup ways of doing this if something doesn't work. You should be familiar with every method and have tested it out multiple times. Be sure that you can do all the basic enumeration and password cracking without having to spend too much time uh, looking up the commands. Do you understand common false positives? This is really important in avoiding rabbit holes and saving a lot of time. By now you should be familiar on what ports tend to show up and what cannot really be exploited. You should also be comfortable in knowing just how far you should take things with things that you're likely not going to get many results from. The same goes for privilege escalation and especially on Linux. Be sure that you know the common false positives and the patch vulnerabilities that are outputted on your enumeration scripts so you can avoid wasting all this time on them during the exam. Have you considered doing a practice exam? Doing a practice exam can help get you used to that massive 24 hour setting it gets you learning how to structure your day and find a strategy that really works for you. It's also a great indicator of how ready you are and it helps calm those nerves quite a bit. I did a practice exam and it was on the machines Alpha, Beta and Gamma, as well as a buffer overflow. Doing these four machines within a single day without any hints really helped me feel ready for the exam. Have you got a game plan? Many people share their game plan on Reddit as gospel and I'm sure it is a good plan, but this isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Make sure you have a plan on how you attack the exam, where you'll start, what you'll do if you get stuck, when to take breaks, how much caffeine to have, if any, and all of that good stuff. How are your emotions? Managing emotions is one of the best kept secrets when it comes to doing the OSCP exam. We just work so hard and invest so much time in ourselves into attaining this highly regarded certificate it's normal to feel nervous. What's more is that we can really start to beat ourselves up during the exam if progress isn't going as well as you'd like or expect it to go. 
Being able to have less awareness of your emotional state will help you stick to your game plan and give it your all, even if your chances of passing are starting to dwindle. I was so happy after my failed attempt because I just really felt so accomplished. I was so happy that I got so much done and that I got so close to passing. I know with a bit more patience, I'd really be ready for the next time. And sure enough, I was, I passed with 100 points. So as I said, there's no true way of knowing if you're ready for the OSCP. But these are some common indicators that, can, that you can use to check against yourself to see just how prepared you are. However, all this is just my opinion, and I'm sure you've got some advice of your own, so feel free to share it below in the comments. As always, if you found this video helpful, then leaving a like will not only help me out, but help people like you find content like this. Anyway, I've been Jason from Jason's Egg. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.